Oh gosh, a lot. Um, yeah. All right, so it's 10 o'clock. We're just gonna start, you know, talking to chatting. Um, so just an instru- introduction. My name is Katharina, so Kat for short. So that's why my email is Kat with a K, K-A-T at blissfulgrowing.com. And um, just a quick story about myself. I grew up in Indonesia, so that's in Asia. It's a tropical country right at the equator. <laughs> Everything grows over there. Land is fertile because it's a volcanic region. We have all really nice, rich soil over there. Weather is predictable. You only have two seasons, rain and not raining. (laughs) Easy, right? And I just distinctly remember when I grew up, I mean, papaya is there, like like a lot of papayas. And we have papaya trees in, in the front yard and all kinds of trees, obviously, right? Now, remember, you know, papayas have tons of seeds, right? And I just remember, I still remember up to this day, um, you know, we don't eat the seeds. <laughs> we just, I just basically grab the seeds and just throw it over like there's a, a patch of land um, that used to be. I can't remember what it was before. I can't remember. My dad always do like all kinds of home improvement things in the front garden or in the house. So I just throw that on the ground. And next thing you know, we basically have, an orchard of papayas, <laughs> lots of them. I mean, growing up in, in that country, um, I just took it for granted. You know, the, back then there's no this, there's no iPhone. So I grew up playing outside, playing dirt, playing leaves, make believe, like cooking with mud, right? <laughs> All kinds of flowers, you kind of make things pretty with that. And I break off, we like to break off the um, the papaya leaf because it has a long stem. And we would like sweeping the, the garden with it. So it was, it was a lot of fun. We have a uh, wax apple tree, which is like jambu, which is really, you don't really have it here. Mango tree, like really tall, um, a, like a corner filled, I don't know how to call that. It's like banana trees. I was like, because once you have one banana tree, if they like where they are, they just keep on producing more baby, right? So banana trees, like all kinds of like, all kinds of things. So now, so I grew up with plants. Um, let's say even growing seeds, growing seeds. In the school, we have an assignment. Okay, grow this corn. So you kind of like follow the progression of the corn. We don't buy special, you know, potting soils we don't buy special special things we just scoop the 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 soil from the ground from the front yard put it in i can't remember what what was that like buckets or something like bucket in there and just stick the seed in there water it boom it sprouts and it grows so come over here um you know fast forward way 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 like over 40 years later so now i'm here finally own a house in Covina with a front yard, with a backyard, side yard. I love it. Thank you, husband. (laughs) Um, By the way, um, I have an Instagram also for my, our personal blog. It's called husband to feed. (laughs) So follow that. Okay. Because that will be more fun. The blissful underscore growing is more for, you know, kitchen garden. So come over here. Um, I finally have a yard to grow things. But in the beginning, of course, I fail. The, the, the soil is like hard as a rock, like literally, like terracotta, right? It's like clay soil. It's really hard. So, of course, the first time, second time, and I can't remember how many times. Like, I just keep on trying because I was lazy. I, I thought like, you know what? Why can't we just grow things, you know? And I'll just throw things and then it'll grow. And like many other people, I think, you know what? Maybe only mom has green thumbs, you know, (laughs) because she lives in Vegas, it's desert, but her backyard is like oasis. She has a lawn of grass, weed free. She has fruit trees in Vegas. (laughs) So (laughs) I know, seriously, everybody have a desert landscape except her. So, um, but then, you know, then I start doing my research and doing my due diligence. I'm like, well, you know what? It's just different. Over here, we have four seasons. Over here, even though 
where in Southern California, we don't have snow per se, we still have that extreme weather, you know, close to frost. And we did have frost a couple of days ago, like, you know, some times ago. And we have extreme heat and dry, you know, dry. So unless you're growing a desert, like a desert plants, when we start growing vegetable, which is more, which are more delicate, you're gonna have to put a little bit more effort into it, which is not a lot, honestly. Once you know it, it's just like second nature to you because it's just common sense. They're more delicate, so you just have to pay more attention to it. What type of soil do you need to put in? Um, how much water do you need to give them? Obviously, constantly. Um, and what type of lighting that you you know that you need to give the plants? In Equator, it's easy. The, the sun is always going this way, never change, right? So that's, that brought me to actually my, um, my first point, okay? Um, avoiding common pitfalls in vegetable gardening. I'm going to just talk about the, I'm just going to list, I feel like I'm in school again. <laughs> Where's my green? Okay, so I'm just gonna talk about these four points. Ugh, I don't like. You know why some of the chalk is like harder than the other? Ugh. Feel you. This I like this one. So we're gonna talk about sun. I have really bad handwriting, and we're gonna have talk about water. We are gonna talk about timing. And we're gonna talk about soil. Okay, Look, now I lost my favorite chalk. Okay, so why are we talking about soil last? No idea? Okay, why we're we talking soil last? Because usually it's just this thing, right? Sun, water, and soil. That's like the basic need of a plant. Gosh, human too, come to think of it. But. But in, in gardening, this matters. Because soil, okay, you go to the nursery, they tell you, okay, use this soil. You know you have to change the soil. So soil is pretty basic. So I consider that pretty basic. So, but this is important because this is also, um, this is number three in line, to, you know, if you want to be successful in growing vegetables. Okay. Now. As a kitchen garden consultant, my goal is always want to help people to feel accomplished, to feel they are successful, that they can do this thing. We can do this thing, man. Like everybody can garden. Uh, Was that Julia Child? Everyone can cook. Yeah? yeah. Everyone can garden. Even if you just basil. <laughs> right? Yeah. So let's talk about sun. The, the first common pitfalls in vegetable gardening is the wrong location to plant your vegetable. Um, okay, so sun, I talk about the equator, sun is predictable, uh, sunrise in the east, sunset in the west. It's true everywhere else, but the thing is, we're in the northern hemisphere, so the earth is tilted, so the sun is actually a little bit more towards the south. If you notice, in the winter, the sun actually even going closer to the horizon, and then in the summer going back, not straight up, but kind of almost to the top, right? So, so think about that when you think about where to plant, okay? Um, let's say, okay, let's just use this, this area as an example. Imagine this is a, a building. This is the ground that you want to plant, okay? So southern exposure, great, plenty of sun, plenty of heat though, right? So the different plants have different sunlight requirements, obviously, yeah? Shade, part shade, part light, full sun, full shade, or whatever that is. Like, succulents is different. Lettuce, four to six at best, but cooler. Um, okras, oh my God, loves heat. Keep them in the part shade, they were like, not really as productive. So let's say think about an area on the ground and you're gonna have to start ob observing first yeah which area on the garden that gets shaded what time of the day which area that gets a lot of light 
the whole day or part of the day. So notice those stuff, okay? And then adjust that and pair that with the type of vegetable that you're gonna grow, all right? Common sense, right? Right? So it's not that hard, okay? So once you know, I'm like, boom, light bulb. Okay, great. So now you got, you got it? Everybody got it? Good. So, um, da -da 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 -da. so we talk about that. Okay, good. Now second, water source. And now the common mistake people do about watering. I mean, of course, everything needs water. As a human being, the first thing that the scientists look in a new planet, thinking that we maybe want to grow, you know, go to a new planet, is they look for water, right? Water is the source of life after the sun. Without water, we can't survive. Same thing with plants. So no, a lot of people then, um, the common mistake is it's inconsistent watering and then inconvenience. So that, that inconvenience part of the water leads to inconsistency of the watering. So let's say you have, this is your garden bed. This is where you plant your, um, your, your vegetable. And then right there is my water source versus right there is my water source. Which one do you think would motivate you to water the plant? This one, right? I, I felt it at home too. I mean, he knows, like he has to move um, a hose position, just, you know, line a pipe so it gets closer to where I need it. <laughs> I mean, you know, well, that, that one is for chicken, but that's different. But, you know, it's kind of the same thing. But I don't, you know, I feel like I don't want to drag this. This hose is heavy. <laughs> Seriously. Although, I, you know, I, I'll, after this class, I'll tell you what hose to get, which is like a total game changer. <laughs> Not sponsored, by the way. I just love it. Okay. So in order to avoid that pitfall, simple. If you could, if you could get that water source and where you plant your vegetable closer. If the water cannot be moved, then maybe move the plant location closer to it. You can always adjust, you know, like what type of things that you want to plant there. Or maybe the water can be moved. You know, you can always line a hose going to that direction, you know. And then the second part that I strongly believe in having when you start growing vegetable is installing drip irrigation. Timed drip irrigation keyword time keyword automatic because i know there are people who's like you know i i manually water my plants great some people can do that but honestly how many percent of the population do that i can't even only when the hottest day and, I, and then in the morning i was like um, alexa temperature <laughs> and then alexa is like a high 90s today oh my god then i'll go out let the chicken out and then start watering the plants extra. And then, but then after that, the, the regular timer will take care of it. But let's say I'm out of town. Let's say I'm in Spain having, you know, enjoyed my vacation, but, um, you know, checking things like, oh my gosh, it's going to be really hot here in Covina. What am I going to do? I just changed. I have, um, I have an app. He installed the app and everything. Uh, so I, so I check it through the app and change the timer, either adding the duration, make the duration longer or adding another time slot to irrigate. So that's convenient. That's what I said. You can, you don't have to worry about it. You can go on vacation. So for watering, the key is what? Drip, time, automatic, you know, things like that. Basically make your life easy. That's the whole thing about gardening. You want to have a blissful experience as opposed to stress. That's why my company name is Blissful Growing. It came to me at night, suddenly. Okay, so the next one, timing. Here we go. So timing. Um, when you go to the nursery, it's easy. They basically sell whatever in season, right? But let's say... Um, you're so excited about gardening. I have a friend who doesn't eat vegetable, by the way, but he, she loves gardening. You would love to be her neighbor because you get all the produce. 
So she just germinate everything from seed. Now seeds, you can buy any time of the year at the store, at the supermarket, at the nursery, even online. I got my seeds online too. So seeds start germinating beans in December. So I told her, I'm like, girl, it's going to be too cold. Like, you know, she's like, oh, well, I, you know, it's already in there. So it's already wet. So it's already going to start. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, she loves to experiment. So I'm going to leave them be. But what happened is the bean didn't perform, obviously. When the bean starts to grow and ready to produce, there's not enough light. There's not enough heat. Light, you can, you know, give them grow light. But heat is a little bit different. I mean, once the plant grow, you can't put them on a heat mat anymore. It has to be ambient, kind of. Yeah, so it's kind of like a bit tricky. But, or let's say you want to plant um, lettuce in the middle of summer, in August. Um, just because you love lettuce. I do love lettuce. He loves lettuce. That's pretty much what we eat. Um, but then your garden is has this full sun exposure, like beating down the earth kind of sun, like, unre- like relentless. Well, you can't. You could, but you might have to grow it indoor. Okay? So timing is everything. Um, to make your life easier, I suggest um, when you just start it, just go buy seedlings as opposed to start from seeds. There are certain things, yeah, you may want to grow from seeds, but just in the beginning, the nursery sells everything. Seriously. I love coming here. I come here almost, this is my happy place. Let's put it that way. So, um, so timing is very key. This too, it's like easy, common sense, right? Water, you can do. Timing is something that you need to find out yourself by research, and by knowing your, your garden. My garden and yours could be different. There's an area in my garden that can grow lettuce all year long. And um, in, a different, in a different seminar, sometimes it's, it's about microclimate. Okay? Um, so, that's pretty much for the timing. Make sense? That's why I have that, the handout. If we are in Covina in general, this is what you can grow in March and April. This is the perfect time to, to start your vegetable garden because there's so many varieties available to you to grow. Amazing. Okay, let's talk about soil. Finally, we got to the last point, soil. Now, soil, I already shared you my experience. It's... Um, you have to get a fertile soil. If you are lucky, someone else that you move into the house, that person's gardening, so the, the soil is already nice and loamy, you know, you just plant things, oh great. But when I moved in, the ground is like this, hard, hard like a rock. You pour water, water just woo, like on the surface, <laughs> never come down. So um, the ideal soil is called loamy, L-O-A-M-I, like this, loam, loamy soil. So loamy soil is workable. It's not like succulent uh, um, soil. It's workable. It's soft. It's moist. It, it has a lot of organic material in it. It retains water, it retains moisture enough, but it also drains it out as opposed to holding it too much, yeah? Um, In contrast to cactus soil, it has a lot of sand in it. So you pour water, it gets wet, but then it just kind of drains out. So the ideal is loamy soil. Um, Eventually, if you start gardening in in ground or on a raised bed, my favorite is raised bed, obviously. Save your back. By the way, this next month is my 50th birthday. So I'm trying to save my back as much as possible. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So if you don't get that loamy soil yet, easy. Create a raised bed, plant in a container, get a fertile soil. And I'm saying this because I want you guys to start feeling good about gardening. 
imagine if you go and um, to a place and your first impression is like blah you're not gonna go back there right but if your first impression is like wow maybe the second time or the third time you go there there's like a hurricane like i'm talking about let's say i go to cozumel the first impression it's like awesome like we love it you know the third time we go there um it's a bit late so timing <laughs> so there was like almost a hurricane not really but you know it's not really a good weather but because of that first feeling that you get you know it's not always you know it's not always doom and gloom you can turn that around you just make sure you follow all of this to get the best experience so um that's why i suggest in the beginning get the right soil um put it in there so you get a good harvest okay simple nice and that's that's pretty much that um, i wanted to talk about amending the soil but that's gonna that's like a different topic altogether so just right now we're talking about starting start okay start easy make yourself easy don't make life has already had a lot of challenges don't add to it all right um so you have any questions Okay. So that's why I just have the basement just like sitting like behind my TV because I'm still full of earnings. Oh, okay. But inside. Okay. Because, um, well, now I'm scared to put it outside, but I was going to put like a, just like a smallish box to get started and just start like growing herbs and things. Nice. So I was going to try to do that outside. Do you um, have a patio or what? what it's is just it? like a small, it's there like the, where the stairs are, but there's only two apartments. So there's just like a small thing. So I was going to do something like So is it like the stairs coming up in your apartment and the other person's apartment? Yeah, like their apartment's in front of the stairs. So uh -huh. they don't have anything in front of it, but they just have a plant in between our doors. And then okay. I have like a little space in front of mine. I see. Do you have sun in there? Yeah. So a lot. My, um, when my apartment is east to west. So that's the, the door is on the west side. Ooh, hot. Yeah. So. Okay. So make sure... Is it's hot. It has a lot of sun. Um, and when you plant things in a container, they tend to dry up faster. So look into self-watering planter. Um, that way you don't have to worry about, because obviously you can't have a drip irrigation. Yeah. So look for self-watering planter in your case. So, they so it's like a semi-automatic. Do they just like staying, so the vegetables and like herbs just like having more soil? Yes. Okay. And the soil will draw in moisture as needed, okay. which is great. So just Google, Google everything, man. Google is like, yeah. I don't know how we did it before Google. <laughs> um, so self-watering planter is, is like a lifesaver in that, in that sense. Okay. okay. All right. So oh, we're doing awesome with time. Okay. I'm so happy. Okay, good. Um, cause I honestly, I can talk for hours <laughs> if you don't stop me. <laughs> We could go half a margaritas and <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. Well, I can I can talk forever. So, um, even though it may sound a lot right now, I'm trying to make it as simple as possible for you guys. So I hope it clicks something in your brain at least. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna make this whole thing simpler. If you go to my website, it's on my website as well, blissfulgrowing.com. If you follow these three steps, where is it? Here you go. Three steps process in kitchen garden. The first one is plan. And I write down. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. So plan, not plant. Okay. Second. Grow, third one, yay, harvest, okay, so this one I don't need to tell you what that is, but it's actually part of maintenance, um, so the fun part is actually part of the maintenance, it's really nice, um, the, grow, the growing part is basically, um, you know, how to take care of the, the plants, knowing how to take care of pests, diseases, things like that. Pruning it, you know, like I, I said, I, I came home to a jungle. So I need to know how to prune the, the vegetable, like the basil overflow. Hi! 
you want to join us to sit down? I would love to, but I, I just was curious. <laughs> oh, we're talking about how to start kitchen garden okay. and just avoiding common pitfalls. I'm, I'm hoping I can catch pets. I have to leave and pick up a bunch. Oh, here. Let me give you this. Oh, 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 oh. oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. It's a thank you. I have to print it out again. It's March. It's April. We just finished March. <laughs> I know. So weird. Thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll change that. But yeah, change that on yours. <laughs> um, okay, so growing, it's basically taking care of it, pruning it. I came home from my vacation and my basil is just like, I, you know, I know. It's like, psh, and then spill over. So, well, great. I have to make a lot of pesto. <laughs> So it's just fun. Um, that, by the way, if you take this out later on, oh, you got it already? Not yet? Yeah. But this, that has my favorite, that's my favorite pesto recipe. I can talk about that later. Okay. So, so we're kind of going backward. Harvest. Um, there are certain ways to harvest certain things in order um, for you to enjoy the plant longer. Growing, taking care of the pests, the diseases, pruning. Uh, make sure protect it. Let's say if there's a heat, there's a cold, you know, things like that. Now planning. Now planning is where I come in. As a kitchen garden consultant and coach, I help you doing this part. Planning before planting. Okay. So I come here because that is very crucial. That's the crucial part. I talk to you about the right setup. I help you set you guys up right. So the location that you are going to plant, where's the water, how, it's, how best to route that water into your growing area. Suggestion, maybe you want to grow, let's say, I want to have a raise, but my, I'm sorry, you can't, you have, you live in an apartment. <laughs> or um, maybe um, you work full time, you don't have time, but you want a big garden, Yes and no. There are certain things that you could do. There are certain things you can't do, depending. So there's the five questions that I, you know, is in that handout. Those are part of the question that I ask to my clients when they hire me to do a consultation. So those are some things that you can think about yourself as well when you want to start having this kitchen garden. In a consultation, I have more questions that is more specific but that's the basic five, okay? And also I talk about, you know, gardening is basically, there's no mistake in gardening, only experiment. But like research and development, experiment, cost, money, and time. Cost time and money. And time is money, right? So that's where I come in. I help you save time and money. Sure, you, you have to pay me for my service, but that in comparison to the time that you spent. Okay, another story time. Um, I, I have a client in Pasadena. She has grown, she has basically, she's been growing vegetables for six years. But she was, it was great for the first two years. It's actually two planting. So maybe the first year, year and a half, it was great new soil and everything, you know, tomatoes, you know, growing, vegetable growing, herbs growing. But for the last four years, the last four years, she just can't get things right. Nothing came out of the garden. This number three doesn't exist. So she finds she almost gave up and she finally, I don't know, she ha somehow found me on the internet and um, called me up and then I went there. And so we did a private uh, consultation and coaching and I found out that she's missing this too like the knowledge for this too in terms of the setup the, the location that's the only location she has and she ha she can have anyway so that's fine but watering not right and in terms of timing in terms of the timing of the watering it's not right either so she has wasted four years and how much time and heartache is that? You can't buy that back. Every time I'm late for something, 
it just felt like something is gone. You know, I can't, you can't get that back. So um, that's where I come in. That's why when you say like, oh, what do you do? Like my bill, I was like, what do you do? I'm like, kitchen garden consultant. I'm like, okay. It's more than that. I mean, if you start, you know, if you have, want to have a kitchen garden, then you, you'll understand why. Or if you start making mistakes. Because I did that already. I already did the hard work for you. <laughs> I already spent my time on that to get you, um, to basically share you my, uh, my nuggets. So, um, the right setup equals to Blissful Growing, right? That's why the company name is Blissful Growing. And, and da, 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 five question. the five question is in case people is like watching the, the videos wondering what it is. The first one is why? Why do you want to have a kitchen garden? Everybody's reason is different. Two, how many people do you plan to feed with your garden? Does it matter or it doesn't matter? Who knows? Right? Sometimes for people like it matters. Some people just want to have. And going back to the first question, the why. And then how much is your budget? That makes a difference. If you want to have um, like a garden like mine at home, I have like a lot of raised beds at home. I was like, oh, I want that. I'm like, yeah, that costs like even that small one that's going to cost you like a thousand dollars. But your budget is 500. But you want a kitchen garden. It's possible. Then I'll direct you to something else that fits your budget, but still able to satisfy your wants and needs. Okay. How much space do you have? Going back to your apartment, you only have a small space. So the answer container garden, you know, um, there's no water source, self watering, things like that. Or you have a huge land, you have like an acre of land. Doesn't mean you're going to fill that up, right? So how much space you have for the kitchen garden and how much time? Bye, Gigi. Until next time. And how much time do you have? To take care of the garden okay one day a week is actually pretty enough it's pretty good depending on the size of your garden I, I tried that um, I set up a raised bed garden for my church and I only go there once a week so after the service I go to the back and check things out and it's you know it's set up correctly like I said I only need to maintain it um, obviously more than one day a week, perfect is better, but minimum, at least you need to have one day a week. Okay. So answer that if you can't have those, let's say you're a busy person, but you like, you really want to, um, you have a kitchen garden. It doesn't have to be big. It has to be small, whatever. Um, you can have it still time it and pay someone to take care of it. <laughs> right. Okay. So, um, that's pretty much it for today seminar i know it's a lot of things um but it's just kind of like taking you through the surface and just the crucial things to get you into that first step on how to start it all right so at the end of the seminar today i just want to um offer you to schedule with me a discovery call like i said as a kitchen garden consultant i help you Minimize that gas work, right? So schedule a time with me right now. It's only three of you guys, so it's easy. Schedule a time with me. It's 15 minutes call on the phone. And then we're going to go over this, like, you know, your the five questions. I might have a, a, additional questions to you. I might I may not, depending on your situations. And at the end of the discovery call, if you decide to hire me as your consultant to go to your place actually and to assess your your garden or your apartment or or let's say you want to learn something you know let's say you want like you only have this container but i want to grow something what can i do then it's like that lady in pasadena then we're doing a private session for coaching and if you do that then after this i invite you to come up to the front and check this out this is an amazing book guys Kitchen Garden Revival. Lots of, uh, lots of pictures, 
Um, it's amazing. She was actually my mentor. She's actually my inspiration um, to start this. And a, a how to, um, even how to, if you are a DIY person, how to build a raised bed. So at least you know how, even though you don't do it, at least you know how. So when you hire someone to do it, they don't, you know, they don't fool you or anything. Like, hey, what are you doing there? You know, you can pull this book. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so if you, at the end of discovery call, if you decided to hire me as a, your consultant, you get this free book. New ones. This is my copy. I know it has a lot of things in there, but you get a new one, a new copy. And I'm going to give you a special rate for the consultation. Okay. And that's, that's it. That's it. That's going to wrap it up. Thank you guys for sitting with me for half an hour. Do you have any other questions? No? The drip irrigation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the garden hose that I use and I like is the retractable type. So it has a housing and it has a, you know, like, like a car, like you pull it out and then you release a little bit and it will, it will stop the mechanism. And then you kind of pull and then release to kind of wind it back in. There are different brands out there. The one that I use is called Hose Link, H-O-S-E. L I N K. Um, I'm not promoting one brand or the other. I, like I told you, it's not it's not sponsor or anything. But um, I like the brand. But my neighbor used a different one too. I'm not sure what brand that is. She says she got it from local store or something like that. But you see, Home Depot has it. But they have they, but there's just like commercial ones, you know. So um, yeah, so that one is the one that I like. It's a bit pricey, but considering I spent. How much time each time we buy that thing? The hose? The shrinkable? <laughs> Every time we bought that thing is at least 50 bucks. We went through two. Two that's completely damaged. Because, you know, I have one in the front, one in the back. And then we bought another two. Finally, it's still, you know, still good. That one's just not bad. It's called G-Force. G-Force, I think. But that one is a little, I mean, it is semi-expendable. It's not as, as flimsy as the other one. The G-Force one is, is, has a, a nicer, tighter weave. But again, I mean, like I have to carry it. And after I'm done, I have to like turn on, turn, you know, let loose all the water out and then wind it back on. Actually, no, the G-Force you can. The G-Force is actually strong. It's like Kevlar material. It frays a little bit, but people that I talk to, they're, they're, they like it. Um, but yeah, nothing beats just doing this. Like, and then just kind of go, <laughs> just follow the, follow the reel. So, and it makes your garden not clutter, you know. After a while, I mean, that G-Force, even that one, I don't even bother to wind it. It's just there. <laughs> And then get the one, um, obviously not in your apartment, get the one that like the gardeners here use, the store has it, so get those. Save your back. So you can use that. <laughs> Any other question? No, not yet? Okay. So yeah, um, while I'm cleaning up, come up here, check out the book, get the, get the recipe right here. Um, like I said, if you want to schedule with me today, then you get all the stuff that I told you, the book and the special rate. Um, oh, also about the upcoming, it's not March 23, guys. It's April 23. Okay. So two upcoming workshops and seminar in April. The first one is Monarch Garden. So Monarch Butterfly Garden. So I'm going to talk about milkweed milkweed plants that is native and a non-native um, they sell it here i grow them at home how to propagate them why we need them obviously we need butterflies we need the bees too um and it's actually great for kids as well it's actually a, a, a good seminar for kids because there's a lot of things in the, about milk with that 
parents don't know about. So it's it's just safer if they understand because um, the sap from the milkweed is is yeah. Don't get it to your eyes. So I put it that way. <laughs> okay, don't get it to your eyes. Um, and then April twenty third is growing tomatoes. That was that's gonna be fun. So growing tomatoes in a container, you can grow tomatoes too. <laughs> growing tomatoes in a container, that's a hands-on workshop. So if you are on Facebook, um, join me in that group. That's where I post photos of the past events. This one is more kind of like this, like we're chilling, you know, like next time bring coffee, bring tea. Maybe I'll bring cookies. <laughs> I should do that. I will bring cookies <laughs> um, to wake people up. But this one is gonna more of a happening. Usually, I don't know if we can do it here because space, although it's nice, but I think we're gonna do it outside because Melina just got a pop up. So it's a nice tent. So, you know, so we're gonna do it outside. Um, everybody have their own setup with a cute apron. Um, so when we take pictures, everybody look like they work from Starbucks. <laughs> Because the apron is, is green and the logo happens to be um, like this, like black. So anyway, yeah, but so everybody there and then you get to do things. I talk, we do things together and you go home with it. You got a goodie bag, you got raffle prices and things like that. So it's more of a fun thing. So don't forget to sign up for that one. All right, any other questions? No? Nope? All right, cool. Again, thank you so much for joining me. And if you are at home, thank you so much for watching the videos. Um, if you have any questions, you just join us live, just post the comments. And you guys, I have your email. So if you have any questions, just shoot me an email and I'll, I'll do my best to maybe answer your question without making it like an essay. Because <laughs> if you start becoming an essay, I'm like, okay, let's schedule an appointment. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you again. Thank you. Come check out the book. This is really nice. It's really cool. Some of my garden looks like that. Oh, I'm going to post. I'm going to show you my pictures, too. I'm going to close. Can you turn off the life? Yeah. Yeah. It was so much that he stopped it because people kept.